I thought it was about time we did another Apple Mac review. What I've got for you today is one of the 2020 27 inch iMacs. This is an i9 10 core unit. It's a slightly unusual configuration and I'll take you through that in a few minutes. Also has that nano screen configuration on it which is why I've got it set up out here because I was hoping to test the glare but obviously we've got quite a grey day today which is a little bit disappointing. Anyway, let's go and have a look at the performance comparison. Now I'm going to do some benchmarks against my 16 inch i9 MacBook Pro and also against my 2017 iMac Pro, which I think is going to be pretty interesting. So we'll look at the benchmarks, we'll also do some real world tests around things like video conversions, video exporting, there's also virtualization in there and perhaps in another video I'll include some stuff around the boot camp piece as well because I know there's a fair bit of interest in, in doing that on these units. Anyway, let's get straight into it because uh, I'm quite looking forward to this machine I'm hoping it might be my next replacement for my iMac Pro. Here we are with our 2020 iMac. First off then, let's have a look and see which unit it is. So as you can see, it is the 3.6 gigahertz 10 core i9. This unit's only got 16 gig of RAM, mainly because I normally upgrade these afterwards from uh, other sources rather than paying that money to Apple. You can see that it's got the Radeon Pro 5700 in here with eight gig of RAM. And in storage, I think it's only the half a terabyte unit. Yeah, there you go. So let's start off. Let's go and have a look at some of the benchmarks. Now benchmarks are not particularly interesting, but I think they do give a good indication of what you can expect from a machine. So this spreadsheet here shows all of the benchmarks or relevant benchmarks from the machines I've used over the last few years. Now I'll put a link to this spreadsheet down below if you want to go have a look at it. But as you can see at the top here, the new 2020 i9 iMac is king of the hill. So there's quite a reasonable gap between this iMac and my iMac Pro, which you can see below it, which I, I was kind of expecting, but it, it is quite a bit more than uh, perhaps I originally thought it would be. The only place where my iMac Pro is probably a little bit more competitive with this unit is around the graphics. So I, I'm pretty sure the iMac has a Vega 56 in there, and that seems to to be in some of the benchmarks slightly faster than this 5700. Anyway, let's go and we'll start and have a look at some of the basic performance of some of the apps. So let's get Office fired up, for example. This is typically not a great performer on macOS. I usually find it far faster on Windows, but as you can see, it is quite quick. And certainly very, very usable, but that's what you'd expect for this machine. What about things like the performance of the hard drive? Well, let's fire at the Blackmagic speed test. What we'll do is just try a five gig test. Now what I found is the drive is slower than my iMac Pro. My, my iMac Pro, I get nearer three gigabytes per second write speed and about 2.8 gigabytes per second on the read. And also just bear in mind, I'm also recording the screen on this at the moment as well, which tends to slow down the performance tests here from the uh, disk speed tests. But as you can see, it's still pretty impressive. And also the general performance of the machine, and this is the bit that really surprises me, it does feel faster than my iMac Pro. If we now go and open up photos, this is about 130 gig library, I think, but you can see it's practically immediate. Now, one thing I can't really show you on here is the nanotech screen. It does seem to take some of the impact away from some of the photos. I'll try and show you it on my handheld camera in a few minutes. It doesn't seem quite as bright or as saturated as my iMac Pro screen, to the point that I think I prefer the iMac Pro screen. Anyway, let's move on. We'll look at some of the real world performance pieces rather than just uh, synthetic benchmarks. So let me quickly try and show you what I'm talking about on the screen here. Now what I have done is position the unit right next to my windows, which I have to say I usually find a little bit difficult to use because of that glare. But I don't know if you can see here, but I'm not really getting any glare at all. Now also I have over here, a key light which is obviously very bright and even if I face it into the light I hope you can see that there's very little glare on the screen so from that perspective it's quite impressive it's certainly better than what I get on my my MacBook Pro sitting here for example now the, I, again I don't know if, I, if I'm going to be able to show you this but if I bring up some of those photos that I just had the one thing I am noticing is that the colors don't seem quite as vibrant as they do on the non nanotech screen. So I don't know if anyone else is noticing that. I'll have a look around and see if anyone else is experiencing the same thing. It is quite hard to actually show, of course. Yeah, I might hunt around and see if anyone else is experiencing the same thing or whether it's just 
my own opinion. So let's move on. The next thing we're gonna look at is just doing a video conversion in handbrake because this makes the machine sweat and we can also have a look at the fan profiles and the temperatures. So what we're looking at here is just a simple video conversion in handbrake. So you've got the 2020 iMac on the left and my iMac Pro on the right. And what you will see is that the 2020 iMac completes this in about 16 minutes and 10 seconds. And the iMac Pro goes on to take 17 minutes and 25 seconds. I've compiled the results into this little table here. So you can see at the top there that the 2020 iMac is by far the quickest here. Going down the stack, you'll see the 16 inch MacBook Pro took about 26 minutes with the 2018 Mac Mini, the 6 core i7 taking 31 minutes. Now, one thing that is particularly interesting is if we look at the 2020 i7 13 inch XPS, which is a quad core, that took an hour and 16 minutes to run. And I think what that's a great demonstration of is how important the TDP value of each of those chips. So one i7 is not you know, directly comparable to another. And I think that's a really important point to consider. And one that's often missed when people start comparing you know, cheap Windows laptops with your 16 inch MacBook Pros of this world. Let's just take a moment to look at the temperatures and the fans during this conversion. So on the right here we have the iMac Pro and on the left we have the 2020 iMac. As you can see, they're both running fairly hot the utilization is high on both of them. Now we're not seeing throttling on either, which is a good sign. Now one thing I will say is that the fans on the iMac do ramp up far quicker than the ones on the iMac Pro. It takes a little while for the iMac Pro to build up and actually demand that level of cooling. That's not to say that the noise from either of them is particularly bad. I can't really tell the difference between the units in terms of volume. But for people who are worried about the fans, I'd say it's actually quieter than my 16 inch MacBook Pro. When that one's under load, you can certainly hear it. When the, either ones of these are under load, you have to actually listen out for it as far as I'm concerned. It might be more of a problem if you work in, you know, kind of audio or music studio or something like that. But I don't find it that intrusive. Let's move on and look at desktop virtualization. Now this machine has both Parallels desktop version 16 installed and VMware Fusion 11. I'm only going to work with Parallels Desktop here, but if you're interested in VMware Fusion, jump to this time code here and we'll have a look at the same tests on that platform. Also, they have improved VMware 11 quite a lot. So I thought I'd do a separate video just comparing those two. So if you're interested in that, subscribe and keep an eye out for that that it should be here shortly. So I have a single Windows 10 machine configured here. So just to be clear, we are using the Pro edition of Parallels Desktop 16. That's quite important because the standard version only allows you to use up to four cores, whereas this version, the Pro or the Business, I think as well, allows you to use up to 32 cores. Also, bear in mind in VMware Fusion, you're limited to 16, I believe. So let's have a look at this Windows 10 machine I've got set up. It's a pretty basic setup. I haven't really modified much from here. If we have a look at the hardware, just from a, a, a benchmarking point of view, I tend to start with half the number of cores available in a machine, just so I can get a, a feel for how a machine performs. And then what I tend to do is, is I customize that depending on the load I require in the machine. Everything else is pretty straightforward. I haven't really modified much from that. So let's get this machine fired up. You can see what the performance is like. There we go, it doesn't take long at all. So let's get logged into it. And that is our Windows 10 machine. So I think you'll agree their performance is pretty amazing. Now it is the virtualization piece that I'm most worried about with the switch to AR ARM, but that's a whole different subject. So let's have a look. We can see here that we've got our CPU, we've got our five virtual cores allocated over one socket and eight gig of RAM allocated. So let's fire up some office apps. We can see what the performance is like. There we go. I think you can see the performance is excellent. Now, one thing you might be interested in, that uh, video conversion that I did previously, one of the things I did on this virtual machine was rerun that conversion. So if we have a look at the video conversion times performed previously, 
you'll see that even under Windows 10 virtualized, it only took 33 minutes, which is kind of about the same sort of time as the i7 Mac mini. It's not, it's what, six minutes slower than the 16 inch MacBook Pro, and that's in a, a virtual Windows environment. But look at the performance compared to the 13 inch XPS. I know they're different chips, but you know, it kind of gives you an idea of how well Windows 10 or any Windows machine performs under virtualization on Mac OS, and it's probably one of my favorite features. In terms of video performance under this, one thing I have done is I've run Cinebench previously on here. If you want to see the performance of that, if we just pop into the benchmarks, I think I put it on there. Yeah, there we go. So we got 5473 from Cinebench R20 under Mac OS native, and I'm getting about 4865 under Windows 10 in parallels. So the performance is really good. It is incredibly usable. Now, one thing Parallels have been getting absolutely better at is getting this coherence mode working more effectively and more seamlessly. So to show you what I mean, I'm just gonna fire up these Office apps again. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is switch this device to coherence. Okay, now in this mode, your Windows apps appear as just Windows on your normal Mac OS desktop. So obviously you can run your normal Mac OS apps over the top. Now this is tends to be how I use my Windows 10 setup. So I have one Windows 10 machine that has all my office stuff in for, for my work and that, that tends to fire up automatically as soon as my iMac Pro boots. So that, that's how I work and it works really, really well. So let's have a look at other things, perhaps around things like snapshotting so what I'm going to do is just take this out of coherence. Now snapshotting performance on Parallels has always been really, really good. So let's go and have a look and see what it's like. So what I'm going to do is pop to actions. I'm going to take a snapshot. There we go, it took no time at all. Now what I'm going to do is go and remove Office from this machine. Now I'm not going to make you sit through this because it's not particularly interesting, but then what we'll do is we'll have a look at the performance of restoring a snapshot. Okay, that's all done. Now we have Office completely removed from this machine, so we don't have Excel, Visio, or anything on here now. Let's go and see how long it would take to restore that snapshot. So what I'm going to do is just pop up to Actions, look at our snapshots, you can see there's the test snapshot that we took earlier. So let's go to that snapshot. There we go, it's all done. And as you can see, we have our office back. So I think you'll agree the performance of this is absolutely awesome. So let's get this shut down. Anyway, that's probably one of my favorite functionalities that works really well on Mac OS and certainly on the more recent Apple bits of kit. The virtualization is probably, like I say, one of the things I'm most worried about with the move to ARM. So this video is in danger of dragging on, so I think it's probably time to wrap it up. I did do a couple of other tests. So for example, if you're interested in Final Cut export times, what you're looking at here is an export time on my iMac Pro, as well as uh, an export on this 2020 iMac. Any other comments? Well, I've noticed that the microphone is a hell of a lot better on this machine. So that last bit on Parallels, for example, I recorded that just using the internal microphone. Obviously, the webcam on this as well is also a 1080, which is a lot better than the previous ones, which were only 720p, which is crazy in this day and age. Uh, somebody was asking me around the cleaning cloth, for example, for the nano screen. There it is. It says dropping it. It feels more like a car chamois leather than it does say uh, microfiber cloth, but there you go. Now I won't be keeping this unit, but I'm dangerously close to ordering one as a replacement for my iMac Pro. It will, I will order a different spec. I won't order the nano screen, I don't need that. I need more storage than the half a terabyte that's in there. And more importantly, I need the 10 gig internet ethernet connection, which this one doesn't have. At the end here, I've also included some stuff around VMware Fusion, so go and have a look at that if you're interested. I am going to do a proper Parallels Desktop 16 versus, versus VMware Fusion review shortly because they have improved Fusion quite a lot. The, the first version of version 11 was terrible. I had so many problems with it. That will be coming shortly. Any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll see if I can answer them for you. 
Till next time. Let's also have a look at VMware Fusion. Let me fire that up there. Now this is version 11. Let's have a look and see exactly what version we're running. 11.56 and it's 11.56 Pro as well. Now, I wasn't the biggest fan of VMware version 11 when it came out. I had all kinds of compatibility issues with it. I also had all kinds of performance problems with it as well. They have put a lot of fixes in and it is a lot better than it was. So let's have a look at this virtual machine that I have here. First, let's have a look at the settings. You'll see that I've got five cores allocated much like it did with uh, parallels and eight gig of ram there's nothing else really worth looking at in there so let's get this machine fired up and we'll see what the performance is like there we go let's get logged into this if i can remember the password And there's our machine. Now I do have Office installed on here, so let's get that fired up as well and you can have a look at the comparison of the performance. There's our video. Let's get PowerPoint fired up as well. And also Word. Now, I'm not sure whether it's going to be clear on here on the video or not, but Parallels certainly outperforms it from a just from a straightforward Windows 10 and you know kind of Office standpoint. It's not a massive difference, but it is enough to notice. I don't think if you had either product, you'd be particularly unhappy with the performance of it. But I tend to use both, and I use them for slightly different reasons. So because of that, I get to notice the performance difference. Now, Fusion also has a similar view mode to Parallels when it comes to using desktop apps. So let's switch to that. I think they call it Unity. Yeah, there you go. So let's try their Unity mode. There we go. And as you can see, it is very similar to the Parallels Coherence mode. Now again, talking about performance, the, the main thing I notice is, I, in fact, again, I don't know if this is gonna come, come across on the video, but the actual performance in Unity is not anything like as good as what you see in Parallels. Some of the screens can be a bit laggy. So for example, if I start moving things around, yeah, you can see that. That's not something I see in Parallels at all. Now I will say it's so annoying in Fusion that I just wouldn't use it. It's just too irritating. Anyway, let's pop back into the full screen mode or rather single window. And what we'll do is we'll have a look at the performance of snapshots. Because again, this is somewhere where Fusion has seriously lacked behind Parallels. So what I'll do is I'll pop up to the virtual machines, we'll go into snapshots, and we will take a snapshot. And that's done. Like I say, it's painfully slow. And I'm not sure if you could see there, but also the fans were ramped up while that was happening as well, which is also irritating. So let's go and have a look and we'll see how long it takes to actually restore one of these snapshots. Now, much like the other tests, what I'm gonna do is quickly uninstall Office just so it has something to restore. Again, I'm not gonna make you sit through that because it's not very interesting. So let me crack on with this and then we'll look at how long it takes to restore this snapshot. So that's all done. now. Like I say, using the machine in a window or full screen, the performance, you know, it's a little bit slower than Parallels, but not enough to be that irritating. But trying to use Unity or using these snapshots, it just becomes really painful. And it's probably the primary reason why I don't really use Fusion anymore. Anyway, you can see this machine no longer has Office on it. So what we'll do is we'll go and get the snapshot restored and you can see how long that piece takes as well. So I'll pop up the virtual machine, go into snapshots, there is our snapshot there. So we're gonna restore that snapshot. Let's see how long this takes. There we go, and we're done. So Office is back on this machine. There we go. So I think you can see restoring snapshots, it's far less painful than taking them. So they obviously have done something to improve that, but it's still not a patch on Parallels. Now, like I say, I will do a separate video on Parallels Desktop 16 versus VMware Fusion 11. If you don't have either, I, I personally would go for Parallels Desktop. There are some licensing restrictions to consider. For example, Parallels is subscription-based, although they do have a perpetual license you can buy as well. And it's also locked to individual machines where VMware Fusion isn't. So there are some things to consider, but if you are interested in that, 
subscribe to the channel and I'll do a more in-depth comparison between the two. But anyway, let's get this machine closed down. And we're done.